Hey everybody, Mikey Vitale here. I wanted to just kind of go over uh, my experience with the Aerophone AE10G. I received this about two years ago for Christmas for my fiance, who was then girlfriend, and I thought it was great. I never was able to get the bite sensor to work properly, not ever once. Now that they're releasing the new AE30, I thought it would be kind of interesting to uh, dust the old cobwebs off of my Aerophone and uh, see if I could get down to the core problem of why my bite sensor never really worked. It's also important to know that I've had two Aerophones, one that I got for Christmas two years ago that I was very uh, distraught that the bite sensor didn't work, so I actually shipped this thing over to California to uh, go to Roland to see if they could fix it. Um, they shipped it back and they didn't even basically touch it. Uh, the bite sensor was still completely turned off. There was nothing different with the unit and it still didn't work. Um, at the end of the day, rather than sending it over there, they opted to send me a new unit. Same exact problem. So I decided to intervene. I'm kind of a, you know, a tinkerer myself because I do uh, instrument repair as well for my, you know, bread and butter. So I couldn't help but try and intervene a little bit and I came up with some pretty interesting results and I wanna share those with you right now. What you will need for this hack, you will need a Phillips head screwdriver, some Teflon tape. Uh, this is also called plumber's tape. This is completely waterproof and there's no glue on it. And what I had lying around, cause all my tools are at work, uh, I just took two uh, handyman uh, pliers um, and I was able to use these two, and I'll get to that uh, shortly. If you look, I have this Teflon tape sticking out underneath this collar. And this collar is attached with two Phillips head screws. Okay, you can take the mouthpiece off, and you can kind of see what I did there. And what I was able to do is manipulate this so that way it sits forward. And when I didn't have this Teflon tape here, this thing didn't lay forward all the way at all. So I was able to force push this forward and give it some nice flexibility. And I venture to say that if you're having a problem with your bite sensor, it's probably because there isn't enough flex forward which it's not engaging when it touches the reed. I'd also like to preface this with, if your mouthpiece is kind of like jiggly, uh, that can affect this as well. So I, I kind of had to play with this a little bit. Now I tried to get it in between the notch here, but forwards and backwards, even the little play that you get from it, it does affect the way that the bite sensor works. These are two, pieces of Teflon tape. And it wasn't enough to bring it forward. I originally had this tucked underneath this screw and you can see it's kind of catty corner, but I actually discovered that the way the bite sensor is positioned, it doesn't necessarily need to be right in the middle. In fact, if I was playing around with this a lot, and I realized that it was kind of like failing on me again. So I was like, what the heck is this? So I was able to discover that this was, it needed to be a little bit more the left side, which was able to get it to uh, trigger properly too. How I tested this, what I basically had to do to test this, I had to put my whole, this is gonna look silly, but I've, 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 I'm gonna go the full depth of this. I basically put my whole mouth on this thing and with my tongue would kind of uh, mess with this little trigger. So when you're hearing the pitch bend up, I'm lifting this forward with my tongue. So you can hear as soon as my tongue isn't touching this, it's dipping the pitch down. The reason why I mentioned two pliers is that you may have to fine tune this metal to fit on the reed properly. So if you look here, that metal tip isn't touching the reed at all. And if I just bring it forward a little bit, there you see it right there. 
So it's now touching the reed. So you have to kind of finagle the mouthpiece a little bit. So now it's working properly. The way that I manipulated that this piece of metal, I took one plier and kind of held it right there so that way it wasn't like affecting any of the processor units at all. And then flex this with the other side back and forth in order to fit on the reed better. So a good way to test to see if there's too much play in the actual bite sensor itself. This should be all the way forward. If you hear this, that's play. You wanna hear nothing when you're tapping this. Okay, so there's already too much play in this as there is. So what I'm gonna do now is dissect this, tighten these two pieces of Teflon tape to kind of bring it forward a little bit more. And what you're gonna need to do to do that is you take your screwdriver and you unscrew your two screws. Okay. Which is going to allow this collar to lift up. And you're just going to put a little bit of pressure on there to make sure that that play is gone. So there's still play in there. I'm gonna bring it forward a little bit more. And I'm, I'm putting pressure on there. I still hear it, so let's see here. Okay, that sound is gone. So with your pressure on this Teflon tape, you're gonna take your collar, place it back on, which is going to, you know, I'll leave a lot of that pressure on there, but I'm still leaving that pressure on my thumb while I apply it on there. And then we're gonna take our screw, just our first screw in the front side, and we're gonna screw it back on. Okay, now let's take a test. See if that, did that sound, that click go away? And it's gone. Okay, you want this thing nice and tight. You want it to be as front as possible. And if we take our mouthpiece and we place that on here, and we're just gonna try and line up that little, that little dimple. So right now it's not on. So if we just bring it forward a little bit, you see that, that it's now right there. You can kind of see it. It's right there, right by my finger. So there you have it, a uh, quick hack. Um, now it's very important to say that you have to be on top of this thing because the Teflon tape does seem to flex. And I am noticing that it, though it's waterproof, it does have some of the properties that I would like for a section of this instrument that's gonna get wet all the time from saliva. Um, I think the Teflon tape is the way to go, but I left that tab out of the collar, so that way you can kind of adjust this thing. This is like super inconvenient. Um, this is definitely one of the biggest flaws of the AE-10. And just talking to people on certain Facebook forums about the Aerophone, most people just bypass the bike controller uh, in the first place, which seems to be a shame because these things are not cheap. I hope this helps the community and uh, 
you know, it's definitely brought a whole element to the uh, AE-10 that makes me want to play it again that I didn't have before. And now I, I'm like really happy that I was able to get this certain level of expression back into the instrument that I never worked in the first place for me. So I had to kind of intervene. Thank you so much for watching this. Again, my name is Mikey Vitale. You can follow me on YouTube uh, under JazzMike88 is my channel. You can also look it up by finding uh, Mikey Vitale. And you can follow me on Instagram at Schminkis, S-C-H-M-I-N-K-I-S. And I really hope this helps. Uh, please make sure if this helped you, uh, give this video a like. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much.